morning, young ladies. It's great to see everyone. Uh, we are going to be talking about the collage badge. Most of you probably know what a collage is. It comes from a French word that means to glue or stick together. So your, um, your handbook tells you some things about collage that you maybe didn't know before. It started, well, collage has been going on forever. The ancient Japanese back 800 years ago did beautiful Japanese calligraphy. And you know, that's straight in a line rather than going across the line like we do in Western writing, they go up and down and they would do it on these beautifully colored papers and then tear the paper. So the paper has a jagged edge. It'll be colored maybe this beautiful color of peach or green. And then they glue the different strips of paper. Your um, handbook suggests that maybe you research one kind of collage. That would be one you could look into is in Japanese calligraphy. Then even uh, about the same time during the Dark Ages when uh, artists made religious paintings mainly, rather than just painting them, sometimes they would decorate or embellish those paintings with jewels uh, or fabrics, these beautiful gold woven fabrics or jewels, so you could research that. Your badge um, handbook even tells you about a more modern woman. Her name is, uh, I've forgotten her first name, Rita uh, Bolafio. She's Italian. She and her family escaped to America during World War I. She lived from 1898 to 1995, and she became very famous in America. She started putting various things together and she was multi-talented. She was a horsewoman, she was a poet, she was an artist. She did a lot of things very well. And actually, I think if you're a collage artist, it helps if you are interested in a lot of things because you bring together a number of different items to make one new piece of art. I'm gonna, I ask all of you to bring something that was your favorite color, bring five different things. Before I ask you to show me what you brought, let me show you what I brought. I've been waiting for a long time to do something with this. I, this is a thermostat that hangs on the wall and tells you how to turn your air conditioner heat up and down. Ours broke, so the man had to come and take it apart. And look what's on the back side. All these, a printed circuit board with all these cool little things sticking up. But the neatest thing, my favorite thing is these little deals that look like kind of like Legos with all these different colored wires. I've got a red wire, white wire, green, purple, and blue. So I've got blue is my favorite color, as you might be able to tell. So I'm going to use this blue wire and make in a collage, maybe some of the other wires too. What I thought I might do with this is make this, it would be a collage of my city. This could be the downtown area. See, if you look real closely, some of those look like streets. And those little things sticking out could be the tall buildings. And then I could do go to the botanical gardens where things are beautiful, not downtown, and use another little thing I brought, which is a scrap of material that has embroidered flowers on it. And then I thought maybe on the roads, I could use this piece of yarn. I don't really know exactly what I'm going to do, but there's three blue things. And then here's a map of where I live. I'm going to actually cut out the map and use it as the background to glue everything else on. Uh, where's my other thing? Oh, and this, a tape measure to measure how far apart things are. So I'm not sure exactly what I'll do, but I thought I would use all those combination of different things. Some of them are flat, some of them are three-dimensional. The really most fun collages are things that are three-dimensional, like you could glue something flat with Elmer's glue, and then you might need a stronger kind of glue to glue on something that sticks up and is 3D, but it can be whatever you want. Now, we're gonna talk about the way to plan your collage. Number one, plan it out ahead of time. If you look in a magazine and you see a beautiful picture that's very large, let's say it's of a beach scene. So it's got some sand, it's got some beautiful waves, maybe some palm trees. If you cut that up and we're looking at, when I'm talking about this, we're looking at step two that says focus on composition in your handbook. If you take a large picture and cut it up, 
into smaller shapes, you could rearrange them. And if you were doing that, you would be just like what Picasso did when uh, he did still life with chair caning. Uh, you see that in your handbook, those of you who might have it with you. That was in 1912. And probably when you're looking at that, you're thinking, what on earth is that? Well, Picasso was very innovative. Before his time, which he developed, he and George Brock, a French artist, developed the idea of cubism. Before that time, if you were an artist, you painted something to look realistic. It had perspective. The things that were farthest away were smaller. The things that were closer to the viewer were larger. And so you had a perspective going back in space and looking very realistic. Well, Picasso and Brock abandoned all that. And they said, no, we're not gonna go with realistic perspective. We're gonna take one item and look at it from all different angles. So in this, um, the thing that's in your handbook, the um, chair caning has a wine glass in it. You would probably never know it's a wine glass unless you had studied this painting. But it's, it's not just taken as a bowl with a stem. He cuts it and chops it apart and looks at it from underneath, from on the side, from straight on up above. And it forced artists to take a second look at the way they viewed what they were going to create. View it in multiple different perspectives, not just the realistic perspective of looking straight on, but looking from underneath, looking from the side, looking from above, looking at it as, it, as if it were chopped up in little pieces. So if you did your uh, collage focusing on composition, step two, you could take one painting, one picture, one thing in a magazine, and chop it up into little pieces and rearrange it, not necessarily in a realistic order. That's one of your options. Another, which I thought was really neat, it says create a collage diary. For one week, start collecting things. They might be store receipts, a card from someone, a restaurant menu, a train ticket, a movie stub, or various flyers that come in the mail. Now we're not all going out to movies or on trains much anymore, so that might be hard to kind of collect something right now, but collect what comes in your mail or maybe what if somebody sent uh, a card or a note to you. And that would be another thing you could do. Take a collection of a week and put it together in a collage and it would be kind of like a day in the life or a week in the life of you, of Catherine or Abby. Uh, then the third op option they give you is to create a photo collage. These could be anything. You could make a family tree photo collage. It, you, what you would do, you could draw a tree, but all these little lines wouldn't be drawn. These would be pictures of various members of your family. The tree could even be cut up photographs. The whole thing could be photographs depending on what you wanted it to be. But if you drew a tree, with roots and branches, then you could have various members of your family all in the family tree. You could do the same thing with school friends. You could draw a schoolhouse or a scout troop meeting room and put collage of your friends in there. That would be called not a multimedia thing because probably everything in that kind of collage would be a photograph and that's called a photo montage kind of sounds like collage, it's a French word, but everything in the collage would be a photograph. So it's up to you on step two, focus on comp uh, composition, to decide exactly what you do want to compose. Do you want to have multiple things that are not photographs? Do you want to have found objects? Do you want to have strange little wires like I've got? Do you want to have bolts and uh, Legos and other 3D objects? Or do you want to focus just on photographs? So step two, you would decide what you want to do. And it could be anything you love. Flowers, your favorite flowers, your favorite birds, your favorite foods you could do. I, for me, that would be ice cream cones. I would do all different ice cream cones if that were it. Um, it could be your favorite books, your favorite songs, your favorite movies. And you could just go wild with creativity. Step three says, Create with color. And that's why I ask you to bring five different things, all your favorite color. 
those are two suggestions. Create a diary of what you've done for a week or two, gather some objects, and then make a narrative kind of collage. Here's my life for the last two weeks. Okay, let's see what else we haven't talked about. Uh, oh, step four. Create a collage from everyday things. Ask ask your friends to turn out their pockets and get everything that they were going to throw away, like an old slip from the drugstore, the, a cash register receipt or something like that, sugar packets, chopsticks, used napkins, things like that. But here's the one that's the hardest to me. Create a collage on a found surface, like a lampshade, a shoe past its frame, a piece of driftwood, now those are going to be hard to do, but boy, if you did it, wouldn't that be cool? You could take a lampshade if it was already kind of coming apart or falling apart. Don't go get one of your mother's lampshades that's on a lamp now, but ask her if she has any ones that she has kind of wait, she's waiting to throw them away and talk. Well, just interrupt me if you do, because we'd love to hear about your colors and what you brought. So the second choice besides a narrative, here's what I've done for the last two weeks and here's what I'd like to create art out of, all these found objects. The second one is a color uh, themed collage. Uh, the one I like the best is, cre and this is step five. You don't have to do this one. This gives you three choices. It says, number one, create a self-portrait. Well, that doesn't mean a picture of me. It's a portrait of what I am, what I'm interested in. Do I love dogs? Do I hate snakes? Do I like to go hiking? Do I love the beach? Uh, do I like Reese cups? Or do I like ice cream? So it would be an idea of what you're interested in, what there is about you other than the shape of your face. So it's a portrait in terms of likes, interests, and desires. If you love horseback riding, there could be a horse on there. Um, another one, and I think I'm gonna do this one. Create a collage with an advocacy message. What particular issue am I interested in that I would use my collage to kind of uh, weighed other people to care about this issue too. And the thing I would use would be bumblebees. Bees are very endangered now because we're spraying pesticides on the food that the bees eat, like dandelions. We think of dandelions as weeds, but they're the bees' food. And if the bee colonies die, there's going to be nothing that uh, pollinates all of our food and our flowers and our food system could have to actually possibly be endangered. So I would do an advocacy collage on save the bees and I could use all, I could actually, I was thinking about these little strange wires I showed y'all a minute ago. I could uh, weave these wires together and make some kind of bumblebee maybe but you just have to come up with it. And as you start working on these, it gets easier and easier to realize you can create something that you never would have thought about another, out of another object. And that would be interesting. And you can use the idea that your collage, whatever you make it to be, is bringing light to a subject that other people need to know about. Either they need to know more about you or they need to know more about some group you care about or something like that. So be thinking, that you, there's a lot of planning ahead you have to do in order to make a good collage. You have to think, where am I going with composition? Where am I going with color? How heavy are my materials gonna be? What kind of glue do I need to affix them? And then what kind of surface do I need to hold everything together? And then, like Picasso, if you want it, if you use an old piece of wood, you could actually take some rope or twine and go around it for the frame. Notice in that picture in your badge that he used uh, an oval wooden frame and he used rope glued onto the oval to finish it off. So you would be thinking about, are you gonna frame it? Are you gonna use something unusual for a frame? And all the, you have to plan it out. So next week, when you all come, bring one collage that you've finished this week. We'll do another one for the following week. 
It can be any, any one of the numerous ones we've talked about, one based on color, one based on your life and your interests and your, your greatest achievements. I'm proud of myself. Here's all the honors and awards I've won. It could be something like that. Um, and we might save the advocacy thing for the following week. If you have something like I do, like you care about the bees or you want to rescue kittens and dogs that nobody else wants, we'll save that for next week. But pick any number of the collages that we've talked about today and get it ready and work on it all week and bring it to next week's meeting and we'll have a great time sharing and seeing how all of us have been creative. With that said, unless anybody has any questions, I'll see you next week and good luck.